Cockney is the Yinzer of, of England. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children over the age of 21, it's the Hop Nation USA podcast with episode 51 featuring Adam. Hooray! And Steve, which is me. Hooray! And our special guest, third Mike, Sean from Importe's podcast. Hooray! See? He's got it already. He's in. I'm in. (laughs) I know how to follow culture. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at call check, and then I just die off for the rest of the episode. <laughs> no, I'm here. No, for the I'm... listeners, Steve just went and laid down on the couch. Pretty much, yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> so we're going to have to carry this the rest of the way through. All right. I'll call it out from there. <laughs> <laughs> just oop it in. It'll be fine. <laughs> just so you know, that won't be the last March Madness reference I make during the show. Oh, go ahead. All right. It's going to mean absolutely nothing to you. I get that. Yeah. This is just for me. All right. That's fine. And just so you know, this will be the last March Madness. Uh, what Ever? <laughs> no, Ever? Are you this, calling this will, that? This will be my last March. Well, yeah, if I die. This will be my last March Madness. Uh, what do you call it? Reference? Reference. Thank you. All right. All right. I haven't had anything to drink yet. I will I will carry the team. I don't know that much about college basketball, but go North Carolina. Yeah, I think I sure. have them going There's, to the final So in my bracket. I think oh. there are universities in that state. There are. There yeah. are. I've been to one. Duke. Oh, you're one of those guys. <laughs> no, no, I didn't go to Duke. <laughs> oh, you go to Duke. Just went, I've just physically been there. I, we, uh, we went to, for my, my buddy's wedding, uh, and the, the guy I drove down there with, we had a lot of fun because there was a, a hotel slash golf course called the Duke. And so it was a big thing for us to leave our hotel, go to the Duke, and take a Duke. Ah. Ah. (laughs) So. Was that on the golf course or? Overlooking. Okay. All right. Were you able to call somebody Pilgrim while you were doing that? I don't know what that reference means. The Duke. Right. Really? Yeah. No. John Wayne. I get it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. The Duke. Yeah. just. Too far. I've I've never seen a single movie with John Wayne in it. (laughs) He played Genghis Khan once. Oh. See, yeah. this is all news to me. <laughs> <laughs> we are an edutaining show. Mm-hmm. You're learning things. However, I think maybe we should try to learn things about beer. <laughs> yeah, that is why we're here. <laughs> Instead of old racist John Wayne movies. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't racist. It was just really, really poorly cast. Mm. <laughs> Slash racist. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's... <laughs> no, it's... <laughs> It's still that old whitewashing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Let's talk about beer and stuff. Yeah. So for episode 51, uh, if you remember last week, we talked about how we're moving out of stout season. Which means it's time for some spring cleaning. Yes. And if you're going to be doing some spring cleaning, then you should spruce up your life. That was really womp, well done. Womp. Uh-huh. That was really well done. <laughs> I don't know if you had that in your mind. Yes, I did. Okay, so did I. I didn't have it. In, I didn't have it in my mind that you would jump in like that, but you know, you tagged it pretty well. So yeah, you <laughs> Hot did it tag. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, call me Batman because I'm a regular Spruce Wayne. <laughs> oh, no. puns are accepted on this show. See, so. yeah, if we're, gonna, <laughs> if we're gonna get punny. We better let's, get, let's make sure it's professional, folks. <laughs> So what's the first beer? I mean, we've been talking for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a beer in our hand. What's All going right. on? What's the deal? First beer is going to be the Alaskan Winter Ale, and it is brewed with spruce pine tips. That makes sense. Yes. It's coming from the Sitka spruce tree, which is pretty common in the Pacific area. That makes you know, sense. Where Alaska is. <laughs> it's been there a while. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always thought Alaska was in that small box in the bottom left corner of the map. <laughs> Hanging out with Hawaii. Yeah. It's really close to Hawaii. <laughs> if your social studies book cover is to be believed. <laughs> Our social studies books growing up still had the USSR in them in the mid 90s. <laughs> Trouble ahead. I mean, they might come back in the. <laughs> yeah, you, you, don't don't wanna, yeah. you don't want to turn in that book too quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Don't throw that one out just yet. It's coming Those back. Books are around. expensive, uh, but we're looking at a six point four percent ABV, That's not so twenty two IBUs, mm-hmm. and it's an English old ale. So it's not really anything. I uh, hope you finished that sentence. <laughs> it's really not anything. <laughs> it's not really anything. I was going to say it's, it's not going to be anything too harsh on the flavor. No, I wouldn't think so. So good looking unit though. Why? Thank you. Yep. A little wiggle whiskey glass. This mm-hmm. is delightful. Yes, these are our little. Wiggle whiskey tasting glasses that we earned 
in our days of competitive home brewing. Taking a look at this, it's a nice copper, a little bit of an orange. I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. I can't really go any yeah. further than that. Copper There's orange. no sense in trying to explain further because that's what yeah. it is. Basically, no head on it. No, but I mean, it's a, it's an old English. Yeah. I'm not really expecting a big old Hefeweizen head on this. No. I'm trying to place that nose. Awful. <laughs> I'm not a fan of this nose. You're smelling a lot of pine, aren't you? <laughs> uh, see, it's not even the pine. It just, I, I don't know. It's like a, there's a candy that I'm trying to think of. Root beer, root, root beer barrels? No. Yes, that's exactly right. Boom. N- oh, nailed it. it. Yeah. That's not what I'm getting. I'm getting it's like. It's really faint, but. I'm getting a fresh malt, but. It's almost a black licorice, like, tail to it. See, I'm I'd... sticking with root beer barrels. Okay. I am getting that candiness about it, but mm-hmm. okay. It tastes like a can, which is ironic because it came out of a bottle. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, oh. It is kind of, it kind of has that. You're right, that kind of metallic taste to it, just a little bit. Yeah, it, a little bit. It really does. It really tastes like I'm sucking on a bottle cap. That's weird in a big way. <laughs> Interesting take. I'm not completely sold on this either. It has a very strange aftertaste. And what's interesting is I'm not finding any spruce in this. Neither am I. Yeah. It, it has a very light refreshingness on the tail end. It's trying. It's almost like it's trying to be heavy on the front end, light on the back end. Yeah, I'm not. I'm like. I'm not really getting a good malt profile with it either. Honestly, it's like a. It's like a light lager. Yeah. 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 I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm also getting more of that metallic if, taste. If you gave the more you I drink. Me, <laughs> if you handed me this and a Yingling, I feel like I'd be hard pressed to tell you tell them apart. I know. I can tell you. Steve could tell it. I, I can tell the difference between this and because Yingling. He absolutely hates Yingling. But I still think I would dislike I'm not a fan them both. Of Yingling <laughs> I'm not a fan of Yingling either. Yeah. See, I can drink it. To me, that's that's a baseline beer. That's that what I was grew my up go-to on. back in college. And I don't know if I changed or they changed the beer, but it suddenly started making my stomach hurt really bad. Hmm. After Sounds familiar. So long. Um, I, I remember one of my great memories of college was going to this place called subs and suds i went to iup i don't know okay. if you guys are mm-hmm. familiar um and they had 32 ounces of yingling for i think it came to a dollar 66 or something like that after after tax and everything makes sense so i would grab two of those and they had a, a, an extra large pizza there for like five dollars and 25 cents so it was like you got 10 bucks you're in and out you got pizza and you're a little bit buzzed you're in good shape. Yeah, watching like TV that. on the couch in your apartment. It was a, it was a wonderful evening. Yeah, could you imagine doing that nowadays? I, that, I, that little amount of money? Well, yeah, not no. only that, but yeah, <laughs> just trying to consume that much beer and an entire pizza in one evening. Oh yeah, too. Oh, well, I never claimed to have eaten the oh. entire pizza. <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely leftovers and friends involved. They would also get their beers, and we would we would head off to wherever we were headed that night to go drink more beers. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or liquor, or what have you, or whatever. You know, this is America. You do what you want. Yeah, just make sure it's super cheap. That was the name of the game in college. Yep, absolutely. Maximize <laughs> your dollar. So, on that note, I think it's time for some news and notes. Yeah, we can do news in and the notes. world of beer. In the world of beer. So, uh, earlier, the top fifty breweries uh, were released by the Brewers Association. Okay. In terms of production numbers. I guess it is time for that again. It's about that time, so... Yingling number one. <laughs> you didn't even have to read my notes. No, I don't have to <laughs> read your notes. I just know how big yeah. the, I know how big Yingling is, and I know Sam Adams is too. Right. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's, it's not going to change from no, year to year. It's, well, the only thing that might change is which is one and which is two. Yeah. That's the only thing that might change. Yeah. Now, are we talking about physically one building brewery? No. All, all over production. Correct. Okay. Correct. But so they how are, is Budweiser not number one? Because they are not considered an independent a beer. brewer. <laughs> well, well that's oh, beer. See, I missed the independent part. I missed yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when the list comes out In from, the, from the uh, Brewers Association, it's just everybody who's an independent brewer. Okay, right. because I'm pretty sure Budweiser transforms oh, yeah, no. the yeah. Yeah. Lake <laughs> Erie into <laughs> cans of piss water right ab inbev was obviously number one yingling it actually came in at number six overall okay so there are five conglomerates that are above them that's pretty big for for independent yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll i'll rattle off the top five for you guys okay uh yingling yeah boston beer company sam right. adams yes uh number three sierra nevada okay delicious yes with two large breweries now uh number four new belgium okay okay Again, multiple breweries now. Yeah, yeah. And number five, uh, Duvel. Okay. Now that I don't know, I've heard of. They're kind of a conglomerate, 
They do but a bunch. Don't they no. uh, do Omegong? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I don't think that list actually changed from last year. I don't think year. so either. No. <laughs> uh, so just for your information, the... Looking at your notes, it has last year's date on it. So, Adam, <laughs> that was really lazy of you. Just brought out the same paper. Shut up! Although, <laughs> impressive how you've kept that paper in such a good shape for an entire year. I filed Completely it away. Unwrinkled. <laughs> There's a manila folder upstairs. We are, in, we are in year two, so it's time to recycle old material. So. Mm. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that's, that's called a callback. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the Alaska Brewing Company that we're drinking from right now, 19th. That makes sense. 19th. Okay. So they would make the tournament. They do have distribution to, I think, almost all of the states? Well, obviously to here, because yeah. we're drinking it. Well, Ohio. I, said, I said almost all the states. They okay. get, they get, get to, to Ohio. Ohio. They don't get the PA. I don't... Er, they might get the PA now. Well, those are your options. Yeah, yeah. They do or they don't. <laughs> they, do, they do or they don't. <laughs> it's a coin flip. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Nothing has changed. Nothing Everything is the same. Beer's still big. So, so yeah. <laughs> not news, really. I mean, it's not news, it's but it's a stretch it's, to call that news. I it's a note. It's a That's note. why we say no, right. news and notes. Oh, okay. oh, sure. It's of note. Yeah. That's my fault. Everybody's still yeah. big. My apologies. Thank you for covering my ass. My apologies to the listener. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have actual legit news. Well, we're waiting. <laughs> we're waiting. <laughs> so, uh, the Brew Dog Brewery, you may or may not know them. Nope. We've th- we, you do, but you don't think about them much. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> uh, the Brewdog Brewery is the one that they're infamous for selling the taxidermy squirrel. I do know them. And yes. the, you know, in yeah. Ohio, correct? Well, yeah, I mean, not anymore, but they did sell it at one time. Right. Yeah. They have announced a new hotel. By a brewery. Yes, by a brewery. That makes sense. Is it in a brewery? Yes. Oh. How'd I know? <laughs> so, uh, just I'm, l- I'm actually reading your notes over your shoulder. That's fine. That's fine. You <laughs> can sorry see, you sorry can about see, breathing on your neck like this. <laughs> you can see that mine are all handwritten and they're crinkled, so this is coming from two years ago. <laughs> Before we even had Folks, a podcast. He, he pulled yeah. it out of his pocket. Yeah. <laughs> I've, just, looks like I've just had this waiting. The, but the Brewdog Brewery, they opened a facility in Columbus, Ohio, a couple okay. years ago. Right. They Their brand new tap room opened a, pretty much exactly a year ago. All right. And with that opening, they announced that they're going to open the very first craft beer hotel in Columbus. So pretty much the only reason to go to Columbus now. Yeah. Strange pick. (laughs) Yeah. Not where I would have put it, but hey, not my money. Uh, How this ties into today, though, uh, they just recently finished the... uh, It was going to be a brewery slash hotel. Okay. So they just finished the brewery, which is called the Overworks, and it's a Sours only brewery. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, because we have a brewery here in Pittsburgh that did the exact opposite. Right. Dry Log went from being sours and wild ales only to being uh, strange roots. Which is everything else. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is all still Brew Dog, so they didn't change their name. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's kind of a subsidiary kind of thing? A yeah, subsidiary, yeah. Whatever that word is. Right. Subsidiary. Subsidiary. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. You helped me out with the word uh, uh, reference. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> The uh, the hotel though is attached to the Sour Brewery. Okay, and you can get a room and look out over the, <laughs> the entire brewery from your room. That's pretty badass. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Nice yeah. of you. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot more amenities that go with this. Okay, I, I, there's one amenity that I'm really hoping for, and if it's there, I'm going. Okay, well let me go through them. That's and, right, and I'll and I'll see what is you it have. a beer water slide? Not yet. But yes, now. <laughs> That's a little close. I think it's just called a beer slide, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's make this a thing. I mean, it could be a beer water slide if they change out, you know, brew dog with you know ab InBev products yeah. or you know mm. yeah but that's really polluted water <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't want to drink it don't swim in that <laughs> but two reasons why this is pertinent for today one the sour works just opened mm-hmm. and they announced that they're going to open another hotel in scotland in scotland well that's where the brewery is originally fl- from right right yeah i mean come on you got to try somewhere else like pittsburgh hint hint <laughs> I don't know. I haven't drank enough brew dog to say yes to that. If Southern Tier wants to open a hotel. Ah. Hmm. Now you're talking. But the amenities for these hotels. Yes, 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 yes. Let's get into that. So the Columbus Hotel is a 50-room hotel. Mm -hmm. Each one seems to have a theme. And uh, each one is going to include a tap. That's what I was looking for. That's awesome. 
Except for the tap is going to be the BrewDog flagship beer, the Punk IPA. So, Adam's out. <laughs> oh, no, Adam. <laughs> Why would they do that? Because, because their, they're delicious. It's, and it's their flagship beer. Yeah. Ah, damn it. I like my answer. Well, I mean, IPAs are good, and I'm sure the BrewDog one is good, so. <laughs> and that's why it's their flagship, because IPAs are good. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and disagree with every single piece of that. <laughs> uh, on top of that, every room's going to come with a mini fridge in the room mm-hmm. that's going to have selections from all the other uh, beers that they brew. Aha, okay. And one in the shower. Shower beers are the best. Shower what? beers. What? Yes. A mini fridge in the shower? A mini or fridge. a beer in the shower? No, no. A mini fridge built into the wall oh of the shower. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just going to move in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, let's see. They're going to offer meals at the brewery, obviously. The uh, One would think. And every meal is going to come with a beer pairing. Nice. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. They better get their breakfast game on. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I already mentioned, every, uh, it seems like every room has a way to look in on into the brewery so i think like there's there's rather than balconies facing out it looks like there's balconies facing into the brewery i like that you can hang out on the balcony yeah look into it now is it round it's round ish i think (laughs) i think it's like a horseshoe that goes around Uh, okay Okay. i mean for columbus that makes sense it's it's hard to say yeah it's Mm -hmm. hard to say because it's not officially open open yet uh, it's supposed to open uh, this September, though, the one in Columbus. Well, perhaps we need our Columbus correspondent to go check it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what's up with that. We're still not done with all the amenities, though. But wait, there's more. Yeah, there's going to be a spa on site. Oh, that is way too close to a beer slide. And the spa... Yeah, that's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, but the spa is going to be offering massages with hop oils and malted barley. Oh, God. That's a little on the nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it's going to be, you know, hop oils and, like, the, it looks like a mud, like a barley mud. <laughs> That's interesting. That's a bit Very much. Very interesting how they're going to do that. I was thinking, though, bathing in beer, uh, to bring back up the beer slide. Yeah. That's how you get a yeast infection. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought that up because this Are is you? this is the final <laughs> yeah yeah this is the final amenity. I'll see myself out. <laughs> this is the final amenity. Yeast infections for everyone. <laughs> yes, it, pr- pretty much because they have a luxury suite with a hot tub that is going to be full with an IPA. Ah, hot IPA. Yes, hot IPA. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> That, you know what? I don't think I could do that. You have to pay extra for that? Yes, you do. <laughs> you have to pay extra for your yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> and the antibiotics, are they free? Yeah, that's a parting gift there. You would hope? <laughs> I'm very curious if they're, they're going to be able to maintain that. Uh, me too. I would like to offer you guys the opportunity to guess how much it's going to cost. For the luxury suite or oh, just, just for anything? Room? Yeah, just for anything. Good. <laughs> God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highball a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna say two twenty nine a night. You're pretty damn close. Two twenty nine is close. That's that's just for a regular room. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay. okay. So yeah. I want to say two hundred and twenty nine euros. I don't know what that translates <laughs> into. <laughs> I'm gonna say you went over. So fuck you. <laughs> Actually, I think a euro is about a dollar at this point. Is it? I think it is right, not, now, right about now. It's it hovers around a dollar five. Oh, all right. It's not like the sterling British uh, pound sterling, which is like one pound is like a dollar seventy. Getting hosed. <laughs> yeah, I th- I'm pretty sure that pound sterling is the most expensive uh, monetary currency. Yes, currency. Currency. Mm-hmm. Without it, you don't have to call it a monetary currency. Most currencies are monetary. True. I've, I've found. True, except for <laughs> as my <I've> experience, <laughs> except for the occasional rock currency. They're also monetary, though, right? I mean, I think we're getting a bit of a philosophical discussion here. What is money anyway, and why does it have value? Only because we believe it does. Because and that's why I'm here today, to sell you both Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into cryptocurrency. <laughs> well, I might. No, I really don't. No. <laughs> I don't think your computer could not exactly. take it. Exactly. Yeah, it can barely take it. <laughs> run this podcast, let alone start mining. You know what? If I could just take a quick sidebar, fuck those guys, because... <laughs> All I want is a GeForce 1080 on my computer or two, and they've j- jacked up the price of video cards so bad for their fucking pretend money. <laughs> pretend money? Yes. It is pretend it's money. pretend money. 
You can't you can't hold it. <laughs> you just lost three very reactionary like <laughs> listeners here, like in their in their bomb shelter, clutching their guns to their chests. And, These guys can suck my dick. Click. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, well, I used to like this podcast, but Ow. I stuck can't around when they made it. fun of Budweiser every episode. But this is with it. It's a bridge too far. I was okay when that one said he didn't like IPAs. <laughs> And I put up with the other one saying he hated Yingling. <laughs> this will not stand, though. No idea why this guy's from North Dakota, but <laughs> all right. I think we have a listener in North Dakota. <laughs> Look, the land's cheap out there. It's mm-hmm. true. Ain't no liberals with our miles. <laughs> <laughs> There's no nothing for miles. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, and Montana are so boring <laughs> so how much does this hotel room cost so if we kind of went if, off the rails here yeah if you if you actually want to know that i i pulled these numbers from their indiegogo the the hotel was com- was mostly crowdfunded really yeah i need to get in on that yeah you need to get on crowdfunding to buy us new microphones <laughs> um just, but, but look just buy a few bitcoins yeah wait a month you'll have <laughs> a half of what you started with <laughs> wait 10 more months you'll have a quarter of what you started with wait three years you might gonna have, have exactly what you started with <laughs> interest free i guarantee it. nice nice i almost did my trumpet first session <laughs> <laughs> that would have been tremendous look it's gonna be beautiful okay <laughs> <laughs> Buy some Bitcoin. Okay, everybody's talking about it. I don't know, man. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. <laughs> uh, That's a whole other conversation. 20 bucks, same as downtown. <laughs> but uh, if you want to know the real pricing for this, uh, like I said, I pulled it off the Indiegogo. And it comes out that it's about 250 a night. Okay. I can get my money back. Yeah. Euros? Euros? <laughs> Can we get back into that conversation? <laughs> no, no, no. Regular many, people how money. How many bitcoins? <laughs> Regular people money. Regular people money. And for that spa package. Yeah. The the spa and the yeast infection tub and all that. <laughs> uh, they're looking at 2750 bucks. Holy what? hell. What? Yeah. It, no. No. Yeah. A night. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah. Why? 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 Because they got to fill an entire hot tub with beer. What else are you going to do with all that sweet Bitcoin money? <laughs> it's just gross. The whole thing is gross. I have the smoking computer. Can I trade that? I was so on board until we started talking about bathing in hot IPA. Yeah, that's not my bag. Well, I mean, you can still do just the regular 250 a night, you know, have a brewery. Sure. And that's awesome. That would be cool. Yeah. I'd be down with that. Yeah. It, it seems interesting, but again, it's in Columbus, Ohio, so. There's got to be something. I mean, the Blue Jackets are in Ohio State. That's game. true. Yeah, you can. I'm actually a fan of the game. Columbus Crew, but they might be moving to Austin, Texas. So, hmm. you can watch the River Hounds still. <laughs> Not in Columbus, though. No, you can just watch the River Hounds. I'll just, I'll just wait till the River Hounds go to Columbus. <laughs> they might do that too. Make it a weekend. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, they do have the first in Columbus, Ohio. They have the first ever soccer-only stadium in the United States. Huh. I did not know that. 1996, they built that thing. Hmm. Wait, Major League Soccer has been around that long? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised it stuck around this long. Yeah. It struggles. <laughs> I mean, it struggles. It does struggle. It's, <laughs> it's a mid-major. The, the last I checked in on them, their team salary cap was $2 million. Oh, boy. Hmm. There's no, there's no wonder why you can't get good players from Europe when they're making right. sixty million dollars a year yeah. in some there, cases. There's linebackers at Ohio State that are making more money than right. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, under the t- little hush hush. Under the table. We won't talk about this. <laughs> Yikes! Let us talk about something a little more relevant to our podcast, though. That's not yeah. Ohio, but it's, some, a right. beer from Ohio. We, well, kind of from <laughs> yeah, Ohio. Yeah, a beer Purchased I picked up Ohio. from Ohio. Yeah. This, uh, this Alaskan what you who's it's Alaskan winter ale. Close enough. Yeah. Eh, I, right. I was not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go back to uh, it's t- tasted like sucking on a bottle cap. Yeah. I will say this for it, though. There was alcohol in it. Yes. There was booze in it. Yes. So the, that's I a plus. Notice. But yeah, it, it had that weird metallic taste. It had like a refreshing kind of aftertaste. Like, But you weren't happy about it? Yeah, but I wasn't happy about it. <laughs> it was refreshing, but I didn't want it. <laughs> so it did get a bit better as it warmed up. It, I still don't think it was enough to save it. Yeah. But we shall see. We still got two more to go. So, Steve, would you call that non-consensual refreshment? Yeah, I would call it non-consensual. I didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag me too. <laughs> I'm not again. 
I just me too this beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, let's get out of here before we get sued. I don't know. I no, don't know. It no, we, we got to get out of here before the other three listeners turn off. <laughs> we find another hot button issue. <laughs> All right, Hop Nation, we will be right back with segment two. Check this out. There's a Seattle company called Devor that enables discovery of new and exciting beers and breweries. Devor gets the best independent beer from literally around the world. Denmark, New Zealand, Belgium, and of course, everywhere in the U.S. The app is incredibly simple to use to get some ridiculously good beers delivered right to your door. Welcome back, Hob Nation. We're here with episode 51 and we're trying to spruce up our life. It didn't go so well in the first (laughs) segment. (laughs) Was that kind of a weird Spice Girls reference? Kind spruce of. up your life? In a way, because we already did that Spice Up Your Life we episode. We did. That was way in the way back times. Uh-huh. It was like episode 29. Yeah, back before... Uh, Electricity? Not quite that far. Back before we had more than 10 <laughs> listeners. Yes. Now that we're up to 12. <laughs> yes. So, we're still joined by Sean from Importes Podcast. Hello. And we're going to move on to our next beer, which is also a spruce beer. It is. So, Adam, why don't you tell us what it is? It's a beer made with spruce. Let's okay. drink it. Neat. <laughs> no, this is the Yards uh, Poor Richard's Tavern Spruce. Okay. Uh, it has a picture of Benjamin Franklin on it, which is always nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Poor Richard's, uh, that's obviously a reference to the Poor Richard's Almanac. Mm-hmm. Written by Benny Franks. Written by Benny Franks. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is all about the Benjamins. Uh, so this is a 5%. Alcohol by volume beer. Okay. Speaking of the invention of electricity. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I didn't even get, make that connection. I, don't worry. I didn't key in on it either. Oh, what the fuck? No, I, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I am leaving. This is the sound of a door slamming. You said you wanted to get professional with the puns. That's well, right. here you is. Game on. No, see, when I get faux outrage of, over a pun, it's mostly that I didn't think of it. <laughs> So this one uh, comes in with a very lucky 13 IBUs as well. Okay, Okay. so almost nothing. Almost nothing. Yeah, so my kind of beer. Why even count? At that point, it's pretty much pointless. Once you once you get down below like twenty five, yeah, it's all pretty much. There's somebody with yeah. a there's somebody with a really sensitive palate. Yeah, <laughs> boy, this is bitter. I'd say about thirteen. <laughs> Who is the madman who's creating this beer? Five or nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that's a little bit darker this time. Yeah, yeah, this is approaching a brown, a burnt sienna. Yeah, oh. if you go into your crayon box. Okay, folks, get out your crayons. <laughs> the 64 count box, please. Yeah, yeah. This is much nicer smelling. Looks, yeah, it looks darker. Uh, this is definitely much more on the copper side rather than the orange side. Yeah, copper, hard to see through. It's like a Little, penny. Yeah. Pennies are hard to see through, too. But that's that's Abe Lincoln, not Ben Franklin. So, <laughs> <laughs> so close. You know, we should start that. We should start that campaign. Get Benjamin Frank Franklin on the penny. I've said it for years. <laughs> This is your platform. Now is your chance. It's the only coin that conducts electricity. (laughs) It's the hill I'm going to die on. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, Yeah. this is definitely a much more malty, maltier nose. Yeah, Uh, maltier nose. This is brewed with molasses. Okay. So heads up on that one. I'm catching a little bit of that. Yeah. But there's a, and this is going to catch, this is going to strike you guys a little strange. There's a bit of a salami to this nose. That is going to catch me off guard. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't smelling the beer. I was smelling this salami (laughs) that I brought with me. (laughs) You guys didn't say I shouldn't bring salami. Surprise! Nobody suspects salami. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish salami. Let's drink this damn beer. We didn't do charcuterie ever on this show. <laughs> We're not that fancy. I know. Yet. Yet. We don't have a charcuterie guy. Mm. I think we need to have a charcuterie guy. Now this one, I'm actually starting to get a little bit of that spruce. A little bit of it. I get mostly malt right now. It is a very malty beer, but I'm also uh, kind of on the back end. I'm getting a little bit of the, the spruce. By the way, it is brewed with blue spruce tips. Okay. As compared to whatever the devil it does, is. It does taste a little bit more blue than the last mm-hmm. one. Yeah. <laughs> getting hints of blue. <laughs> My synesthesia tells me blue, so. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a 50 cent word. This beer tastes like seven. <laughs> George Costanza's baby? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I'm getting a little more of the spruce. It's like, again, there's that freshness on the back end. Yes. But this yeah. time you kind of want it. Yeah, this time it's okay. Yeah. Hashtag this time it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to catch on. That's not going to catch that, on. That, nope, not going to happen. I mean, it might, but no. <laughs> there's, there's like one person. <laughs> no, these guys, these guys totally get it. <laughs> Hugh Jackman whistled at me. This time it's okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, but if we're all going to be perfectly honest here. <laughs> right. I'm getting a little bit of spruce. I was a little afraid when you guys said spruce brewed beer because I thought it was going to be very gin flavored. Ah. Mm, but no. there's not, it's not, it's not overpowering. No, there are no Tom Collins' is here. Yeah. Collins' is. <laughs> and what did you say was the ABV on this one? Only five. five? One handful. Hmm. It's interesting that you bring that up, that you thought it was going to be very gin and spruce like. We can, why would you say that? Because we can get into the history of spruce beers. What a segue. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, for the listener, Steve just slipped me a $5 bill for that segue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> also, I wrote, I wrote, I wrote it on a piece of paper and attached it to a five, <laughs> slid it to him. He but, said it, did his job. <laughs> the five was attached to a string, he pulled it back. <laughs> Interesting history behind spruce beers that actually has kind of almost two origins behind it. Okay, I'm listening. We're drinking the more common version, which is the North American version, uh, but it has a history in Germany and sort of Poland and Prussia. I don't know where Prussia is. Well, is that Prussia, Germany? Sort of, but not anymore. It's a no longer part of Prussia. <laughs> it's no longer Prussia. Right. <laughs> so what I'm talking about is there. there's a city called Danzig. Ah. Mother! I didn't say stop. I tell your children <laughs> not to spruce my beer. All right, now I can tell you guys okay. to stop. Uh, well done, though. Well done. <laughs> yes. Uh, but the city of Danzig was one of the first cities to brew a very black beer with spruce tips. Okay. And we haven't had this black beer on this show, obviously. Right. <laughs> everything's been very brown and coppery and like a regular ale. This, though, was a very dark and thick beer. To okay. the point that it was the wart was boiled for about ten hours. Holy shit! Yeah, for so Holy any, shit. anybody who's a home brewer knows that you usually only boil sixty to seventy minutes. Yes, yeah, ninety <laughs> if you're feeling you know really froggy. Right, right, right. Or one hundred and twenty if you want to charge like seventy five dollars a bottle. <laughs> you better be ready to dry hop that shit. <laughs> I'm looking at you, dogfish head, <laughs> fucking assholes. Uh, well, let's save that for segment three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the beer, it actually only came out to about 2.5 to 7%. That is a bit of a range, but still not that big. Yeah. It, uh, like it, Considering how much they steeped it down to like a syrup, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was only really half fermented. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They didn't get it all the way. Right. They didn't get it all the way. But this, this showed up in like the 1500s in uh, you know Danzig, which mm -hmm. is now known as Dansk, which is a city in Poland. Hmm. So at that point, I assume they do IPAs. Yeah. Okay. Ha. <laughs> yeah, the reason why the, the history is confusing is because Danzig, also Dansk, was part of the Prussian Empire, but then that got broken up into its own city-state after World War One. I. I feel that this segment is going to have to be put up on YouTube, and we're going to have to put up <laughs> a, a map. map. Yeah. Yeah. With highlights. Right. Yeah. All right. City-state feels like a, like... 75 BC type of thing. Yeah. More than a <laughs> World War One era. Right. What are you? Well, I mean, it only existed as a city state from 1920 to 1939, then World War Two came along. And then, oopsie daisy. Got to mix things up again. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so that proves to you folks that city states can only last about 19 years. Yeah. So everyone get. Stop with the city states. City states barely older than cats. People are fucking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> People are obsessed with city states these days. I've found you gotta you gotta upgrade. Just constant memes. Yeah, get on my level. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, this style of beer, this black spruce beer, actually gained some popularity and was being exported from Danzig to Britain, and it caught on about 1720, and that's when they really started you know the import of that beer from Danzig, and it continued on all the way up till. The 1800s and 1900s. And it kind of just went away? Well, what the, the problem is, is it's a bit of an expensive beer to make. I can see that. Yeah. Why? Because you have to boil it for fucking 10 hours? <laughs> right. <laughs> you got to pay a guy to watch it. Yeah. yeah. You got to boil it for 10 hours. You got to. That's a lot of, uh, what do you call, stoking of a fire there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of coals, a lot of wood. Yeah. That, that's like. That's Texas barbecue level. <laughs> you know, you just you just want to make it like in the engine of a train while you're t on a long haul. <laughs> you kill two birds with one stone there. Smart. It's a science experiment. Um, but part of the problem was, it, with it being imported into Britain, was it also gained favor as a specialty medicine. You have to remember this is pretty much before modern medicine. Right. So, so pretty much they paired it with leeches and hope for the best. Right. Cocaine was still you know. Uh, 
that was basically Tylenol back then. So mm-hmm. yeah. right, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. Coca Cola. Right, yeah. <laughs> that just helps with running noses. Um, but that again, that caused there to be a lot of taxes on it. Mm-hmm. Around 2012, one of the taxes that was uh, withheld from it actually got placed on it and doubled the price. Holy shit! Yeah. And so in 2013, the last bottle of Mather's Black Beer. Okay. Was produced, and then that was it. <laughs> then they were done. Yeah. Hmm. So nobody has, like, resurrected this in a hipster fashion? Uh, not a, as of yet. Because so, so what you're saying is we should open a place in Lawrenceville. Sure. <laughs> yeah. We can serve it at the Spirit. <laughs> That's right. Uh, it, it was so thick. Uh, part of it being so thick, though, was it was generally suggested that you serve it, like, either with tonic water or... Um, uh, mm. Lemonade to kind of like as cut a mixer, it? Yeah. like a Rattler almost. Yeah, as that's, a mixer. It's, it's like friggin' tar. Yeah, yeah, it was tar. Yeah, <laughs> it was tar in a bar- bottle. That's rough. Yeah. So that that that's kind of the European version of it. The Americans had a different take, which is much more along what Sean's uh, scared <laughs> <laughs> fears were mm. uh, of it just being straight up spruce. Right. Um, the, in North America, the early settlers were shown by the Native Americans how to uh, boil down spruce tips, mm-hmm. and it has health benefits of being full of vitamin C. Oh, oh so yeah, this is I've healthy beer. That. I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. So this is healthy beer. I do. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> I do kind of feel my scurvy subsiding as we talk. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and as did many of the early settlers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, it, it, uh, that's serious stuff, too. Scurvy is freaking nasty. <laughs> I should know. I have it. I've never been. <laughs> I've never been. You can go ahead and keep the glass. <laughs> <laughs> it's not contagious. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it was up to the point that the the explorer, Captain Cook, he took a couple barrels of North American spruce ale with him when he was traveling through the Aleutian Islands. Okay. And he wrote down, hey, the spruce beer is keeping everybody scurvy free. Everything's good on our end. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep huh. trucking. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, it was the, the uh, Swedish botanist. Peric Holm. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Holm H O L M. No, Calm. C O L M. C A L M. Uh, yeah. Well, if or K A L M. You got me screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he 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 traveled from Sweden to Canada. Well, what is now Canada? <laughs> yeah, cold to cold. And uh, he he noticed a lot of the Dutch settlers made their own version of spruce beer, hmm. which was just straight up twelve gallons of water. Two handfuls of spruce tips, <laughs> boil it, and then add yeast. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't, I don't, you can't even really classify that as beer. But you don't even have to write that recipe down. No. So what you're saying is we're going to get to try that right now. That's no easy, <laughs> easy recipe. Just look, kids, just go grab handfuls off your trees, <laughs> boil it. See what happens. Yeah. He would later find that the, uh, the French actually made it more like beer. The French are good for that sort of thing. Yeah, and they would add they would add like burnt wheat and barley and corn. Gotcha. To their recipe, and then it was in 1788 that they actually found records of American versions, adding just a little bit of hops. Okay. They would add about like two ounces of hops. For how big of a batch? For you know, like a 12 gallon batch. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it was it was legi- it was legitimately half of what like normal ale. Gotcha. Took. So, yeah, there's add about two ounces of hops, and some recipes even called for, like, a one-to-four ratio of molasses. Right on. So that's why the mm. Port Richard, you know, is brewed with molasses. That's it does have a touch of, a tr- of sweetness to it. Yeah. So that's a little bit And honestly, bit as it warms up, I'm getting a lot more spruce. That's You probably should. <laughs> <laughs> as as beers, we find as beers warm up, you get more flavor out of them. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we're going to learn to... Uh, Warm these up beforehand. Eventually, we're going to learn to put them in a hot tub. <laughs> full of beer. Full of IPA. Yeah, full Listen, of Listen, if, if we start making enough money on this show that we can afford that suite, mm-hmm. I'm in. Or we can try to get media passes. <sighs> we get that exposure. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's a three-hour drive. I'll, I'll yeah. make it. I'll yeah. make it to stay in one of those rooms. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. But uh, that that's what brings us to today with the the spruce sales that we're having now. They're you know generally just beers flavored with spruce mm-hmm. rather than being straight up spruce sales because again it was pretty expensive. Right, cost prohibitive. Yeah, cost prohibitive. Uh, they they fell out of favor in America 
because of two reasons. One, they found that lemons and limes were more efficient <laughs> for scurvy. <laughs> and uh, two, just the other beers, you know, the the cheaper, easier to make pilsners. They couldn't they couldn't uh, fight against the spit beers yeah. and the vagina beers. Right. Couldn't compete. So, uh, yeah, we this is what we have now today. But there are other instances of spruce uh, beer, quote unquote, in Canada. There's damn Canadians. Yeah. There's damn Canadians that love their spruce. I mean, there's spruce everywhere up there, yeah. so I don't blame them. <laughs> you got to use it for something, right? Yeah. Uh, but they have spruce beer the same way we have birch beer and oh. ginger, you know, ginger okay. beer. Yeah. Huh. So is it is it a non-alcoholic? Beverage? Exactly. Yeah, huh. it's a non-alcoholic soda. I'd try one of those. I'd try one, too. You can probably get it off Amazon. You got a little bit of gin to that. It might be delightful. Well, speaking of gin, Rogue has their own spruce gin, so you can pair it up with that. There you go. Yeah. But then you'd have to support Rogue. Why wouldn't you? I don't know. I, don't, I was taking a hot take and it didn't, it didn't work. So I mean, no, you're already I, here first, folks. Yeah, I, Boycott I, Rogue. I've never heard you speak bad of Rogue before. I really don't care one way or the other. It's just odd. I've never heard you speak bad. I mean, I've heard plenty of other people speak bad of Rogue. A lot of people hate those donut beers from them. Uh, I've had mixed results with them. Yeah. I've had some really good ones. I've had some good I've ones. I've had too. some yeah. others that weren't so hot yeah yeah they were not hot tub worthy <laughs> so you wouldn't bathe in them i would not would not bathe. no <laughs> that's, no, the, no, that's no. the new what if, what if we cut the, the price metric <laughs> what if it's only a thousand dollars oh okay oh uh, i mean yeah yeah i could do that now? a grand yeah i'm gonna mm. i'm gonna set me up a indiegogo for that <laughs> please help me fill my hot tub with not ipa <laughs> <laughs> I don't want <laughs> nobody wants that i don't know why 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 i don't know some people would those people are weird yeah you can quote me on that <laughs> new shirt idea <laughs> those people are weird like <laughs> people are weird you hear to hear first <laughs> but no, i had i had no idea that there were there were multiple variances on this yeah i had no idea that there was a a city state in that area yeah there was a city state in that history there's a whole lot of boring tax information <laughs> if you if you want to read the entire history of both uh, I, I pulled a lot of information off of a website called zythophile z z y t h o file perhaps we should just put that up on the twitter <laughs> yeah sure maybe but that's <laughs> <laughs> wow. All yeah, right, that's where it comes from. Zythophile. They they do huge history profiles on beers and beer styles. Right on. So, so there's a lot of boring information about taxes. So it's essentially oh, yeah. uh, Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Yes. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Part one. Okay, that's tariffs. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I I can't really hate because I've never actually seen The Phantom Menace. No. Never saw it. Good for you. You know, people <laughs> hate the shit out of that movie. Uh, it's a movie. Um, if you're expecting the most amazing movie ever, you're going to be super disappointed. But right. if you go into it being like, this is a movie made for eight year olds, and, you know, I'm just going to let it go. Not a movie made for eight year olds. Let it go. <laughs> then, then you can enjoy some parts of it. Uh, the special effects were okay in some places, but the midichlorian bullshit. That's the thing. I don't know how to turn this into a Star Wars podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. So, have you ever seen the movie <laughs> Fanboys? No. It's it's a movie. It follows a, a group of friends that go out to Skywalker Ranch before the release of Episode One to try to sneak in and get a sneak preview of the Phantom Menace. And it, you know, it's a big road trip movie and everything like that. One per and I'm not going to ruin everything, but they they go through all these hijinks and everything like that, and they finally get to see the movie. And right before the movie starts, one turns the other one and says, "What if this sucks?" <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Credits. Credits. Nice. Well, Adam, I think it, being that you've never seen it, you should probably just check out Red Letter Media's review. Okay. Which is an hour long, so actually shorter than fa Phantom Menace. <laughs> Worth it. But way funnier, so. Okay, I'm good with that. <laughs> I would love to see, like, a fan recut of it to get rid of some of the debates in the Senate and the... Didn't, uh, didn't Topher Grace recut all three? Is that the case? I don't know. Yeah. Venom? Yes, Venom... That '70s show, Topher Grace, recut the three huh. the three original. Wow, I'd love to wa I'd love to watch that. That'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah, he recut it to make it not suck. <laughs> <laughs> Just on his own, like what a weird project. Just a side project. Yeah, yeah. That is not weird. That I think is, I, I think that was in between. That's um, fantastic. That's in between his that '70s show and Venom time. So he had like I'm not working. <laughs> that was his Tuesday. Yeah. Now he, that's the the main character, right? Topher Grace. 
Yeah, yeah. On that 70s show, Because yeah. the other guy was accused of rape, the, like the cool right. guy. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Hyde. Yeah, Hyde. He, he's he's poisonous now. Yeah. So there's right. venom and then there's poison, I guess, coming yeah. out of that. Nice. So, yeah. <laughs> venom and cancer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's the kind of scurvy you can't cure with a spruce beer. <laughs> no, it isn't. Speaking of curing scurvy, I think this uh, Poor Richard's Yards... Is it? it is by yours. Yeah. Yeah. Out of Philadelphia, PA. Mm-hmm. They are not in the top 50, just so you know. I didn't think they would be. And now you know. Yeah, I didn't think they would be. <laughs> yeah. At least on, uh, according to last year's list. Right. Since these last year's notes. <laughs> yeah, this is old numbers. <laughs> according to these old numbers, yours was not in the top 50. <laughs> these are rookie numbers. Got to pump them up. Mm-hmm. Look, folks, get on Patreon and throw some money to Hop Nation USA so they can afford newer news. I like yeah. that. I like yeah. that. Come on. We got to be able to buy newer news. <laughs> I mean, quite frankly, when it comes down to it, it's the listener's fault. I think so, yeah. Yeah, they, they, that's, that's the one thing they always tell you. Talk down to your audience. <laughs> that's all we do on our podcast, and we have easily one listener. <laughs> Listen, you shitbags. We want money. <laughs> we average one listener. <laughs> we yell at our listener a lot. So our listener lets the kid listen. It's not good. <laughs> but no, this is the Yards Poor Richards Tavern Spruce. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What'd you guys think? I enjoyed it. I especially enjoyed it a lot more than the first beer. Yeah, after that first beer, just about anything would have come out of the <laughs> gate. Like, this is amazing. But um, I do really like it all. It does have that molasses flavor to it. It's got a bit of a uh, a sweetness that kind of sticks around mm-hmm. in the aftertaste. Um, it's got like almost a caramel kind of a feel to it. Um, kind of creamy. Yeah. And... and uh, you get a little bit more of that spruce once it warms up a bit. I definitely recommend drinking this a little bit warmer. Yeah, it definitely seems like it's coming off with almost a uh, lager in a way. A little with, bit. With, with how malty and a sweet it is. Yeah, it's yeah. got a lot of But malt. I'm pretty sure this is still just brewed in an ale style. I would assume so as well. It says Ales of the Revolution. Yeah. Well, that could just so, be marking. Yeah. It's, it's marketing. It says that it's... <laughs> you can't say Ales and make it a lager. <laughs> It, it says that it's bu- brewed with Benjamin Franklin's recipe, which is probably bullshit. <laughs> it's brewed with Benjamin Franklin's bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it. I, I do enjoy it. I think this is the kind of beer that I would, if I saw it in a in a cooler, I would be like, you know what? I'm going to grab one of these in like a, a six pack. You know, if you go down to a, a, yeah, make your is, own sixer shop. This is a, a mix of six worthy yeah. beer. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, it was better than the Alaskan. I'm sorry, Alaskan. I do like some of your other beers. I don't know I what's like up with that. Beers. Something might have happened to that bottle before we I, got I'm to I'm almost <laughs> willing to support that because we've had them on the show before, and they make pretty good beers. Yeah. So, so that, that one's a, a anomaly, yeah. I guess. But this beer I, I enjoyed. Uh, it's not the end-all, be-all. No, uh, it's a good drinking beer. But it's a good drinker. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very, very uh, quaffable, I believe. You know what? what <sighs> when it started warming up, I had to... Sp- this thought come into my mind and then I immediately realized why I said hmm this tastes like Christmas oh yeah uh, because yeah, of the- <laughs> there you go yeah it really did it, like my brain just said hey it tastes like Christmas because there's there's a bit there's almost like a like a very low cinnamony kind of or nutmeggy maybe kind of yeah. like a thing to it so it, I can it, dig on that so a little bit of spruce a little bit of nutmeg a little bit of like molasses and it, it like it's Christmas yeah for me uh when I was doing my research, I came across a NPR article that encourages you to change your old Christmas tree into spruce beer. Oh. So you're not wrong with that. <laughs> Sean. Just going to throw a line in a Yeah, if you, if you have 10 hours. Right. <laughs> Ish. Well, no, no. The the, uh, the American version. Ah, oh, sure. Okay. You, you can do a one-hour boil with that. Okay, okay. <laughs> but if you really want to do it, right, right, if, if you want to do it the city-state way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> If If you you want to be like a 1500s Prussian (laughs) city-state. Don't we all? Do it like the dance, the dance skins do. Mm. Dance skins? Dance skins, yeah. Isn't that a shoe? No. (laughs) (laughs) I believe we can do it like Danzig. (laughs) Yeah, do it like Danzig. Hashtag do it like Danzig. We want to see that trending Trending right now, come on. (laughs) Trend that thing. Hashtag do it like Danzig. Well, we'll be back with segment three and our third beer. And whatever Adam has prepared for the segment. And surprise guest, Danzig. Oh, that'd be badass. Whoa. 
Welcome back, listener, to Hop Nation USA. We're back from commercials. Hey, that's my line. This is Sean, and with me today, He's our over special our guest. <laughs> this is a hostile Steve. takeover. <laughs> you can't have two shows. <laughs> my faithful companions on every episode. <laughs> Steve. He's rewriting history now. <laughs> and Adam. See, I'm just glad you didn't go with and with me as always as Garth. <laughs> I'm just glad you didn't do that because we had a problem with that during earlier episodes as well. And with me is Garth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's move right, right along. Um, you know, we got to make this podcast a little more professional. It's a good thing I'm here. Um, and we're going to move on to the next beer here. Which, yeah, yeah. Real, real quick. Uh, I will read the label to you. This is the Dogfish and Woolrich. It's from Dogfish Head. Pennsylvania Tuxedo. A pale ale brewed with Pennsylvania spruce tips. Boom. Nice. Nailed it. Huh. So, honestly, it's on topic. And, and for that, I commend you. That's why we got it. Actually, so we've got this craftsman, this massive craftsman, made in the USA, badass beer opener that looks like a wrench. And it has a lifetime m- warranty. Yeah, that's, that's the beauty of the craftsman products. Um, Craftsman, you can go ahead and uh, send your checks to <laughs> Hop Nation USA, care of. All right, so I'm going to open this bad boy up and uh, let's get it pouring um, while I tell you about it. So this is turning into an all-American segment here because we've got Woolrich represented. We've got craft beer from America here. we got Craftsman. Yeah. I mean, we're checking boxes here. Yeah. America. That's How do we right. get that Kmart money? <laughs> I don't think we want Kmart money. <laughs> Look, okay, I've said it a million times. I'll say it again. America first. America first. America first, okay? Do you understand? All right, so um, now that we got Trump out of here. Uh, eight <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> we got an Skit. eight and a half. Skit. <laughs> don't make me get the broom. <laughs> Is that all it takes? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nobody's tried it. <laughs> so walk gonna, up with a broom. I'm going to pour this right yeah. into the mic here for you, folks. <laughs> Um, eight eight point five percent. And Trump gets on the back porch mall and just chases them right. off with the broom. <laughs> <laughs> Fifty IBUs, which is much higher than what we've tasted so far, and I'm looking forward to that because I like a bitter beer. I say you're a hophead, aren't you? Yes, I am. Um, you will certainly dislike the offering that I brought from uh, Pen Pen Brewery, the IPA. It is very hoppy. It's probably closer to like a 60 to 80 IBUs. I, I don't know if it says so on the label. That, yeah, that's just not my bag. Um, the, on, the only way I can get through that is two ways. One, double IPA, or it's something like 120 minute, which I think is also a double. Anyways, where just the hops get overtaken by booze. Yeah. I I don't actually know that 120 minute class, classifies as a double being that it's up in the 12 to 18 percent it is so much so i think that yeah i think that gets in the triple range yeah which i found and i found one that made me think i wondered if you would like it or not that being it was a triple ip i can't remember who brews it e cubed it's a e with three yeah no i understand yeah e cubed uh and it's (laughs) (laughs) you understand math that's good um but it, it, it he hasn't had that much beer. <laughs> <laughs> it was a triple IPA with eleven percent and a hundred IBUs. Oof. Yeah, I was Oof. like, I wondered if Adam could take Oof. that. <laughs> I mean, we could experiment. I'll, I'll try it once. I'll, I'll buy it next time. I'm up by Vintage. All right. Let's see what's up. Let's uh, talk about the one we got in front of us now, though. Yeah. The Pennsylvania Tuxedo. Now this is back into that copper color range. Yes. It doesn't quite have the orange hue that the. No, uh, it doesn't. Uh, but it is definitely. Alaskan did. It's uh, very clear. Yeah. It is definitely the most effervescent of the three as well. That too. 50 Very word, fine yeah. head to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fine, yeah, the other one that had white head. no head. This one at least has, you know. It's a smattering, a nice little ring. <laughs> I was going to use that word. Smattering? Yeah. yeah. It's a good word. Yeah, it's all right. It's a sound <laughs> word, a quality word. It doesn't get thrown around a lot. <laughs> now, I'm interested in what you're going to say about the nose on this because I've got a certain take. It's less malty than the other two. But it has a more caramel richness to it. That's but, what I'm getting. But, def- it, but it's definitely, I think it's more hoppy than sprucey. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much I like that. <laughs> See, for me, I'm getting a lot more. <laughs> Got to get the sound effects. I'm getting a lot of cat pee. That's a okay. bit of a. Hmm. Are you a, pa- a cat pee connoisseur? Do we I've, need to I've know had that? my fair share. <laughs> 
It may be that I have cat pee on me because my cat peed in our bathroom last night. Aha. Uh-huh. Mm. And I had to clean it up. So now that, now that you mentioned the cat pee, I can kind of see where you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. Now that he said it, it's... Yeah. Acetone-ish? Or not acetone. What's the... Ammonia. Ammonia. That's, that's the, the word. word. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That was a team effort there. Glad. That's, <laughs> the se- that's the second word that I've forgotten today. Um, so I just want to make sure. So if I start, like, foaming at the mouth and fall out of the chair, <laughs> call 911. On, t- on top of your cat peeing on your clothes, have you had any head injuries? In the- <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. But if I fall out of the chair, maybe. Let's Just don't go to sleep. That's all. <laughs> let's have a taste, folks. Thanks for being on my podcast, by the way. <laughs> hey, we're happy to be guests. There's a lot more spruce to this one. There is. Yeah. But I think it's also complemented by hops as well. I think this is definitely a, the hoppiest of the three, which makes sure. sense based on the IBUs alone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying this one a lot. It has that caramel richness that I already smelled on the nose, but it does have more spruce and more of a hop pine flavor it to it. It does, mm-hmm. but I can There's tell you... There's a lot you, of after flavor of spruce. And mm-hmm. it, it has the, the fullest mouthfeel of the three. It is definitely the, I would consider it the thickest, more, the richest. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I found that uh, yard uh, beer to be ale to be very rich to me and and mm. and kind of sweet and yeah I, the, and creamy. Yeah, the yards one was per, er, was pretty full mostly because it was full of molasses. Well, yeah, <laughs> sure. there is that. Uh, this one's pretty good. I, I'm 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 torn on whether or not I feel it's like the fullest mouthfeel though. But they're bo- both both very of them, complex flavors, though. Yeah, both of them are very creamy. This one's way more complex than the it is. yards. It, I it think. hits every part of the tongue. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there's a there's a not tartness, but there's a sharpness to it. Yeah, there's yeah. a sharpness at the end, and I think that's the hops. Yeah, that's kind of Dogfish Head's mo, though. Throwing a whole bunch of stuff at you. Mm. Yeah, you know, you kind of gotta destruct them all the time. Yeah, <laughs> or deconstruct. Them. Deconstruct, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was either one. It was <laughs> just, <laughs> just throw bottles at a wall. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally just last episode that we did the uh, bitches brew mm-hmm. wood aged, and that was probably the most complex beer we've ever tasted. Yeah. So, so funny you should mention that. Uh, remember the spit beer we were talking about last week? Yes. Uh, I had a friend of mine that actually went down to the bottle release. Okay. Down in Rehoboth Beach. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Rehoboth. Took the Amtrak down to Rehoboth. Yeah, I went down to Rehoboth. These guys went down to Rehoboth. <laughs> <laughs> they stop at a wall walk at a Hagee. <laughs> No, they went down, uh, and guess what? Uh, they were sold out by the time they got there. No uh, way. So they weren't able to try whatever that spit beer was. Huh. They yeah. didn't even have it on tap or anything. Sold out. Did, did, did it even get them to like, maybe spit on them while they were there? <laughs> <laughs> did they just spit in another <laughs> beer? <laughs> get in here. We'll spit on you. <laughs> Eight bucks, please. Might as well. <laughs> this made the trip. Might as well spit in my face while I'm here, too. <laughs> the fuck? Couldn't even save me a beer? <laughs> You knew we were coming. <laughs> you know, speaking of assholes, I was going to throw some shade at Dogfish Head again. Mm-hmm. And, and and I want to just go ahead and preface this with, I love their offerings. I love their beers. Yes. Um, the 120 I threw shade at earlier because it is insanely expensive and probably with good reason. But I just couldn't, I can't drink a bottle of 120 without being drunk by the end. So I'm like, right. what's, I would rather enjoy three beers than drink one beer slowly. That's just who I am. You know, that's a fair point. Makes sense. Um, but I've learned recently that they are very litigious. They have been suing a lot of craft breweries hmm. if they have names that even approach the names of their beers. Really? Yeah. So if they've got bitches brew and someone has witches brew, they will sue them. Holy shit! Mm. And they have sued dozens of companies to stop using names and these are small 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 breweries yeah. like doing th- batches in the thousands of bottles right. you know what i mean um and they're suing them to stop making beers that they've like people have sunk their life savings into the labeling of these beers yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and then they're like this is it this is the last chance we have to make this into a real brewery situation and I'm, i quit my job i <laughs> spent my life That's savings yeah. <laughs> we bottled up these beers and if we can sell this batch then we'll be good and we can continue with this. <laughs> i can pay the mortgage yeah. well i can yeah and, and, I, and i can pay the the rent on this on this brewery and we can make another batch right mm-hmm. and we can roll this into an actual company and all of a sudden dogfish heads lawyers show up and they're like cease and desist uh rename your beer remake your labels yikes um i think there was like a hammerhead brewery and they were like that's too close it's like it's mm. unbelievable wow 
So just mentioning sharks offhand in a conversation, they'll sue you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's been, and then they they defend themselves saying, well, there's laws in the United States that if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you're not consistently defending your trademark or patent or whatever, I guess oh, yeah. trademark, then then you won't have any legal recourse if someone just st straight up steals the name of your company. Oh yeah, yeah. If you're as far as trademarks go, if you're not like using it if you're not uh for you know for the sake of beer if you're not producing a beer with that name and then somebody new comes along and like say they're over on the other side of the country and they don't mm -hmm. even know that you made that beer at all you can start using it but it sounds like dogfish head would sue you yep yeah they <laughs> want to get you they will get you they'll, they'll re-release it and then sue you <laughs> like we're still using it come on <laughs> so i mean i still drink their beer i haven't gone full boycott on it and i do enjoy the the quality and flavor of their beer i i really like the shape of their bottles which is a strange thing to say but they have a unique look to their bottles they really do they really do i love the stamp of the logo on it yeah so i mean i'm willing to kind of let it slide because it's like well they're corporate and it's corporate america and terrible shit happens but it still leaves a bad taste in my mouth pun intended ha. i would be i would be interested in whether or not they've actually put anybody out of business with that yet i would hope not i think very I, nearly yeah <laughs> i don't I mean, know yeah. for sure <laughs> i would hope not i don't know enough mm. if they actually have put anybody out of business i may actually be a little i'd be yeah, hesitant upset about yeah that. i might be a little hesitant to buy my next dogfish head yeah. yeah i hope that's not true though i hope that's purely speculation that they've it has definitely caused me to grab the sierra nevada instead um on many occasions hmm. or or a, a case of the of a, a pen brewery ipa because uh they are very local and the beer is very fresh and yes. yeah i i really enjoy it but um, yeah, I've I've been known to put down the the case of dogfish head because I'm like, you know what, not this time. Yeah, somebody else can get money. <laughs> yeah, so I've probably reduced my purchasing of them by about twenty percent. I would say. Okay. You know, it's not it's not like, oh well, they're going out of business now because Sean's drinking six, <laughs> six, <laughs> six less beers out of them a month. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting and figured I'd bring it up and fuck you, dogfish head. <laughs> Send me a free case of beer. <laughs> Send us I'm, beer, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I might change my mind. Well, seeing as we're guests on the show now. Right. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we have to get it, too. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Send us beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. So while we wait for Dogfish Head to send our free beer mm -hmm. and set us up with that sweet out in Columbus. I don't know that they can do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can do anything they want. I mean, I guess they would pay for us to go to BrewDog, yeah. but that's kind of counterintuitive. But no, I'm fine with it. Yeah, but while we wait, yes. what do we got going on? So it is time to play a game. Okay. Uh -oh. Yes. So, uh, seeing as this episode is coming out right around St. Patrick's Day, yes, uh, it is time that we do not talk about St. Patrick's Day. Cool. It is. There are. So we already have a St. Patrick's episode. If they want to hear about it, they go back to listen to that one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and it's the same <laughs> year ago. So, like I said, you gotta talk down to the audience. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, one of these days you can inherit this podcast from me when I die. <laughs> we'll have to buy you out. <laughs> oh, by the way, my podcast. Uh, Cop City USA. Um, <laughs> Cop City. Come on, it's Malt. I, I'm, it's Malt. I'm suing you. <laughs> come on, it's Malt City State. <laughs> yeah, Malt City, City State. State. <laughs> it's Spruce Tip City State, and I'm suing you. <laughs> Your name is too close to mine. <laughs> Even if we were here first. But St. Patrick's Day, it gets it gets all the press in March. Yes. But there are several several other holidays in March that need a little. They need a little. You know. A little love. Talking about some recognition, yeah. So it is time to bring a little recognition. We're going to do that uh, with a little game. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you three beers that would represent this this day, uh, this holiday, this national day, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And I'll give you the three beers, and you guys have to guess what day it is. Do we have to drink them before we guess? <laughs> no, because I don't have any of these here. Oh, so you're not going to give me three beers. You're not going to give me three beers. So the beginning of this game is you lie to me. Also, yes. yes. That's it. I'm leaving. <laughs> He's giving you figurative. Yeah. I will give you the Hypothetical names. beers. Hypothetical beers. So, for instance, if we were going to do, you know, a Valentine's Day, obviously it was in February, completely right. different month. I'd give you three Valentine's Day themed beers. You'd guess it. We'd move along. Okay. We're going to do that with March. So, the first one. Uh, this day is actually celebrated on March 27th. Okay. That should narrow things down nicely. 
Well, I'm going to go first since I'm a guest on the show. So. Oh, I was going to give you the beers. <laughs> yeah, give me the beers okay. and then I'll guess. All right. uh, the first beer is the Cold Press Coffee Pumpkin by Southern Tier. Okay. The second beer is the Paterno Legacy Lager by Duquesne. And the third beer is the Stockyard Oatmeal Stout. That Legacy Lager sucks. <laughs> Listen, I'm not here <laughs> oh, no, to talk I'm about sorry. how good or how bad it what is. What was the third one, though? Because I just stopped thinking. I was like, that uh, Duquesne Legacy like, Lager. Wait, yeah. there, wait, there is a holiday for ignoring child rape? <laughs> <laughs> In Penn State, there is. How, how, I did, mean, just, how, the, how did the pumpkin fit into that? <laughs> hey, that, whoa. Uh, that's what. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> so the third one is the Stockyard Oatmeal Stout. Okay. How hmm. do the three of them come together uh Steve's national in- pennsylvania oats day no okay shit <laughs> sean since you are the host of the show mm-hmm. we let the, the guests go first sure i know I'm i'll, I'll give them to you again it is the cold press coffee pumpkin mm-hmm. the paterno legacy lager and the stockyard oatmeal stout hmm. i feel like the pumpkin is a is a, a bit of a red herring i feel like it's more the coffee side of things I don't know why I think that. God, I don't know what these things have in common. National Cookie Day? No. No, 0%. Uh, It is actually on March 27th. It is National Joe Day. Oh, fuck. (laughs) Well, wait. How does Stockyard and Oatmeal fit in that, my boy? Because it is sold exclusively at Trader Joe's. Oh, Jesus. Son of a bitch. (laughs) That was good. I like this. I like where this is going. Oh, there's more. This is a good game, but holy wow. All right, then. Listen, I'm not going to make it easy on you guys. No, you came out of the gate with a tough one. I did. I did. That was a brain teaser. <laughs> <laughs> so, ready for round number two. Okay, beer number one, the Fatheads Bloody Julius. Beer number two. Oh, I got the Vehicle. Yeah, I already got it. By the Foam Brewers and the Crushing Student Debt by Stickman Brews. Maybe I don't have it. I'm just going to go for it. Can I go? Go ahead. The Ides of March. Very March good. 15th. That's what it was. Very okay. good. Yeah. How do, how do the other two? Obviously, the Bloody Julius. Bloody, is, I, I knew. That was, yeah, a, yeah. that was a layup. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you guys that one. Uh, the Vehicle uh, by Foam Brewers. Uh, vehicle is a song by the group Ides of March. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I, I guarantee you guys have heard this song before. Possible. It's from the 70s. It's It's... Okay, it's possible. Uh, totally you've possible. heard this song. Yeah. Hum a few Trust bars, me. for fuck's sake. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> Touche. So, uh, the third one, the crushing student debt. Uh, the Ides of March is traditionally when you are supposed to pay back your debts. Oh, okay. So, hence the crushing student debt. Mm-hmm. There you go. Okay. Fair so, enough. you got it, but you... It was it was pretty it easy. Was, off that the first, one was yeah. a bit of a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't find a third one that wasn't yeah. that. That's fine. So <laughs> I mean, that's pretty damn good, dude. I can't believe you pulled those three together. <laughs> Where the fuck did you pull the Ides of March song plus a beer named the same thing, dude? That's just a badass song, and I got really lucky with the beer. Fair. I, I, so so you knew the song. You're like yeah. Ides of March, and then you just like typed in like that like yeah, their I, song I, titles. How do you know? How did you come to this conclusion? I need to know. I need to know your <laughs> you don't. You don't want to go up into the. I want, I'm going to look at your search history. Oh my god! <laughs> like I said, you don't want to go in. Back there. out! Back out! Are we ready for round number three? We're ready. Okay, I'm ready. So the Deschutes Black Butte Porter, the Rogue Dead Guy Ale, and the Full Sail Wreck the Halls. I will give you an additional hint. This is March eighth. I'm going to guess that it's. Honoring the day that General Custard died. <laughs> General <laughs> Custard? <laughs> I love that guess because it's so fucking random. Wait, did you say General Custard? I might have. <laughs> <laughs> of Last Stand fame? <laughs> so that is wrong on multiple accounts. No, of Frozen Treat fame. Oh. Oh. Okay. Custard. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, that's not why we're wearing them either. Okie doke. Did so, you mean Colonel Mustard? <laughs> With the wrench? <laughs> I might have. <laughs> so, we go to our host. All right. I will say again, the Deschutes Black Butte Porter, the Rogue Dead Guy Ale, and the Full Sail Wreck the Halls. God, these are you, your reasoning is so fucking, like... Obscure? Obscure as <laughs> shit. 
And so, and so I can't even trust my own judgment on this. I mean, you got last time you used your judgment, you got it. That was yeah, a but that was yeah. That, right, that should have been the first one. <laughs> I had that on the first. That should have definitely been the first question. It would have been like, hell, we got this. <laughs> that should have been the example. This game's gonna be easy peasy. <laughs> my hubris has been erased. Don't think too hard about it. Conestogo Baggins. Mmm, you're getting there. Oregon Trail. Mmm, <laughs> you're getting there. Oh. I think I know what it is. I'm sorry, it's not your turn. I know. I'll steal it. <laughs> March 8th. And this is a national holiday? It is. Fucked if I know. Um, the national sub- Celebrate the Old West Day. Nailed it! <laughs> well, you're two for two. No. <laughs> you are not. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Steve, if you would like to steal... Uh, it's when Lewis and Clark would reach the West. Also wrong. Fuck. <laughs> also wrong. Flag uh, day. Fuck. No, no, no. All these are wrong. Uh, it is Oregon Day. Oh. Fucking Oregon. Yeah, I know. With your ducks and your beavers. I'm I'm surprised and impressed that you pronounced that word correctly. Ducks? No. <laughs> shoots. No. Shoots? The shoots. The shoots? No, no. Uh, uh, Oregon. A lot of people say Oregon. Oregon? Here. Yeah. I'm on the Oregon Trail. Yeah. In, in, in Pittsburgh, Oregon. people call it Oregon. So, you've obviously been to Oregon? I have never been there. Oh. I've been to Oregon. I have as well. Did you know that they are the only state that has two separate images on each individual side of their flag? Hmm. I did not. Mm Mm-hmm. Huh. What are they? I can't show you. One is a beaver, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think the other is the state seal. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I can't show you. I'm sorry. I can't show you. <laughs> this is the end-all, be-all round. All right. Okay. Winner takes all. Winner takes all. Or most. Not everything, because I can still got to live here. Winner gets all the natty light. You can have all the natty light that is in this house. <laughs> oh, no. I seed. <laughs> I seed. <laughs> so, beer number one is the Ridge Top Red by Silver City Brewing. The second beer is the Tank 7 Farmhouse Ale by Boulevard Brewing. The third beer is the Old Aggie by New Belgian. I will say again. Brewing now, what does Old Aggie mean? Is there a picture on that beer that I should know about? Uh, no. Have you seen this beer? Because I have not. Oh, Is that like an old Oklahoman? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, the people in Lubbock and College <laughs> Station, Texas. Somewhere in Texas, they're going to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, NCAA. I don't care. <laughs> Wait, who? NCAA. NCAA? Yeah, whatever. NCAA Fonz? I don't care. College sports can eat my balls. Here, here. <laughs> okay, then. That. All right. <laughs> so, you guys have any guesses on what day we are celebrating? Well, Farmstead what, what's, Day. What's the Homestead. Day? I don't know what the day is. I didn't write it down. Oh, the National Homesteading Act Passage Celebration Day. That's my guess. That is an incorrect guess. God damn it. I, was, I thought I was on the money. Not Hitler's birthday. That would be 420. That's no, no, April. No, no. Yeah. We're celebrating not Hitler's birthday. Well, that's the holiday. Other day of the that's year, the so holiday. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. I mean, you're technically right. Did you know that Hitler shares a birthday with Carmen Electra? Huh. Did you know that Tila Tequila is the reincarnation of Hitler, according to her? According to... <laughs> oh, that's source. a source. Yeah. Source, Tila Tequila. <laughs> you guys got to read the footnotes. You really need to read the footnotes. It's in the bibliography. How many times do I have to say this? How many times? <laughs> eight. At least eight. Any guesses? Any guesses? Going once, going Absolutely twice. Absolutely not. Um, National Ranchers Day. Actually, you're pretty close. Farm Day. It is... National, National Rodeo Day. It is National Ag Day. Oh. Ag day. Ag day. Well, farmers counts as ag, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a dust up down so at the I'll ag I'll hall. I'll take that point. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'll take that point after my so, sixth guess. So since you have the farmhouse ale. Yeah, farmhouse ale. And yeah. then old Aggie, that's a layup. Right, right. And then the Ridge Top Red Silver City Brewing, because AG is... Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that you wrote these down on a paper that I can see with my eyes should have given me all the answers, but you write in such a hieroglyphic manner. Uh, it's actually can you form. It's what? Cuneiform. Cuneiform? Yeah. Can you explain? Please. Oh, you know, one of the first languages found in Mesopotamia. Oh, oh my bad. <laughs> Wait, isn't there a day celebrating that? <laughs> I'm sure three there beers? Is. <laughs> That's in April. We don't count that. It, uh, it's May 5th. The Quick, day. Steve, three beers that celebrate <laughs> National Cuneiform Day. Uh, uh, isn't there like a high, isn't there like an Egyptian uh, like like honey beer honey be, mead? Uh, yeah, the, the papyrus yellow <laughs> papyrus honey mead. Honestly, by, uh, 
any of them if you drink nine really quickly. Pharaoh's had bre- brewery. <laughs> Then you get writing like mine. Yeah. Well, I feel glad that my writing is so terrible that I'm the only person that can read it. Yeah, it is. is, You have. I can read it. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So with that, uh, you guys are terrible at this. Yeah, Mm -hmm. because you made it way too hard, but thank you. (laughs) Way too hard. It's it's a good game, but it's way too hard. It was a really good game. I love that it's hard. Um, And I think we came up with some fun, funny jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think you did a great job. Yes. Hell yeah. You did a good job making it way too hard so it just becomes silliness. (laughs) Well, I enjoyed it. Well, what the fuck is a podcast for if it's not silliness? I don't uh, this is serious business. Oh, I don't know if you've fun. noticed. Serious busy. Well, ever since I've taken over the podcast, <laughs> it's, it's right. become fucking nonsense. <laughs> ever since it, we became Malt City State. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So with that, uh, I am the best. Okay. You uh-huh. guys are terrible at this game. Sure. I rule. All right. Shall we talk about this beer, the Pennsylvania Tuxedo? Yes. I enjoyed it a whole bunch. I enjoyed it more than everything else. <laughs> yeah, I liked it a lot. All right. There you go. Two out of three. Yeah. I, I don't know what more Two to three, say. Bad. Like... Uh, it has it has everything you're looking for, I guess, in a spruce beer. It is. It is. Right. <laughs> it being that it actually has spruce flavor. Right. And it, it does have some maltiness to kind of kick it back around a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. I did enjoy that. Yeah, it's an easy drinker. For it me, it, it, you, I could go back and forth between the Yards and the Pennsylvania Tuxedo back and forth yeah. for the whole night. Because you get the sweeter beer that's a little bit maltier. And then you get the kind of sharper, more, uh, you know, hoppy side. So yeah. you could go back and forth without getting bored, because you know you're like on beer three, the beer tastes different. You know? Yeah, right, right. So I, I could really, I could see a, a, a six pack made out of three of each. There yeah. you go. And I could get into. I like that. that. A good mix of six. And you know what? You'd have to be around like December twenty second, and I'd be like getting into the Christmas <laughs> yeah, mood. Be like, time. yeah, then. ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, and I'd be like drinking them and. That, that's the one problem. Shaking sleigh bells. <laughs> As a mailman. That's the one problem with the Poor Richards is it's a springtime beer. Mm. Whereas the, the Pennsylvania Tuxedo is around the time, the November, December mm. release. So you could have this for Christmas. You just mm. have to wait a long time. You just got to wait to come back, back, back all the way yeah. back around. I bet it would be delightful after yeah. a year. So I guess you, you got to age your Poor Richards. Yeah, you got to earn it. Bottle gonna conditioning. Seller, I'm going to sell her this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Why not? So with that, I believe it is time that we go to the podium. Yes. So, uh, Sean, seeing as you are the host slash guest, I'm not sure where we are at this point in time. I prefer ghost. Ghost. I Fair love enough. That. Okay. All right. So, uh, seeing I've as you are the, this entire time. the poltergeist, you are a figment of our imagination. <laughs> mm-hmm. So hopefully the microphone picks up your side of things. Otherwise, it's going to be when a really you listen weird back to podcast. this, <laughs> you're going to realize there's no sound coming from my microphone. <laughs> really? Because I would hope it would just be one of those EMF recordings that you see on Ghost Hunters all the time, and we're, we have the best version. We're going to make hundreds because ours is actually hundreds. <laughs> ours, <laughs> ours is over an hour long, as compared to just snippets. short snippets of <laughs> "Get out." <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. My butt itches. You can't believe how much your butt itches in the afterlife. I have to get up early for work in the morning. Get <laughs> out. But I don't, I don't know where to go with this. I'll be honest. I, I say we go to the podium. Yeah, we we'll just go back to the yeah, podium. Yeah, we'll go back to the podium. So, Sean, mm-hmm. if you were to put these on a podium with a bronze medal, a silver medal, and a gold medal, how would you rank these? And why? You know, I'm easily, I'm just going to start out with the bronze very quickly. The Alaskan doesn't even deserve a bronze, but it tastes like bronze. (laughs) So I will put it there. Um, And now I'm going to have to make a judgment call here because I liked both of the the Pennsylvania Tuxedo by Dogfish Head. And I also liked the Yards, whatever it was called, because that's not on the table anymore. Thank you. Poor poor Richards. I took the bottle away. Easy for me to say. (laughs) Um, You know what? I'm going to say... Tuxedo gets the silver, and Poor Richards gets the gold because it tasted like Christmas. Sounds good. Fair enough. Fair enough. Steve, I believe it is time for you to step up. I'm going to go with the Alaskan getting the bronze. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like Sean said, kind of hard to give it a bronze, but that's just the way the show it goes. That's uh, the system we have in place. I kind of would rather give it a copper because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I tasted. I tasted kind of pennies. <laughs> um the silver is it, the choice is a little easier for me. I like the Poor Richards, uh, and it's a real super easy drinker. 
I would give it a silver though, just because I think it's a little too sweet, a little too much molasses. If I'm looking for a spruce beer, mm. if I'm looking for a lager, I would take that over Yingling or well, <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah, any day. And even, it's not even a lager; it's just an ale. Uh, but so the, you're insulting it. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no. I've, <laughs> I'm giving it props because it's punching out of its weight class. <laughs> okay. It's not even in the same division, and it's doing better than a lager. <laughs> um, but the gold is going to go to the uh, Pennsylvania Tuxedo by Dogfish Head because it's got that real Christmassy flavor that we already talked about and it also has that caramel sweetness that I like <laughs> super easy drinker no bad back end and as it is a very complex flavor I, I as far as the quality I would totally agree with you and that's why it was hard for me to decide yeah. but as far as the happiness I felt while drinking it <laughs> it was a totally totally subjective ranking yeah. as all rankings usually are pretty much say. pretty much so that's where I that's where I was coming from, but I, I totally respect that like reversing the order of those two because that that Pennsylvania tuxedo, tuxedo is a really good beer. Yeah, Adam. So to the surprise of no one, <laughs> bronze is going to the Alaska, which really sucks because Alaska makes good beers. Yeah, they really do. Their amber is killer. Right, just not this one. No, <laughs> just not this one. It didn't do anything for me. Not a fan. Moving along, we we've bashed it enough. Yeah. Uh, this is where things get a, a bit tougher, uh, but it still was a pretty easy decision for me. Uh, in the silver medal position, I have to put the Dogfish Head uh, Pennsylvania Tuxedo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a good beer. I, I just it, it didn't quite hold up to what the Poor Richards did. Okay. Uh, and it would have gone in the gold medal position if it wasn't for the Poor Richards. Unfortunately for Dogfish Head, Yards, I think, made a superior beer. I thought it was an easier beer to drink. I think it was a little more enjoyable, and that's about it. I thought it was just a more enjoyable beer. Neither of them were a bad beer. I just just thought the yards was just a little bit better, so that gets the gold medal. Okie doke. There you go. Nice. Well, uh, that brings us towards the end of the show, but before we go, we'd like to give our guest his opportunity to plug all of his Wares? His <laughs> wares? His wares, I guess you would Well, say. folks, I brought this bag full of old used tools. They're pretty rusty here, but I'm selling them cheap. So take a look here. I get this. Uh, oh, shit. Let's see, uh, <laughs> let me see here. This thing here. This is kind of nice. This is a craftsman uh, ratchet. It's, uh, I'd sell it for 20 cents. Um, I'll give you 15. <laughs> Sold. And not a penny more. You're pennies. <laughs> well, goddamn, you're a hell of a salesman there. <laughs> Difficult to work with, but that's God, my by, life. God, by golly, if you didn't just sell me on selling this thing for 15 cents. <laughs> um, you can find our podcast in Portes. It's myself and my co host, Eric, uh, at podsburg.com. That's like Pittsburgh, but pods. Mm. Podsburg with a GH at the end dot com slash in poor taste we are a comedy podcast uh two guys goofing around we do characters sketches um and we do totally real commercials that are not at all fake (laughs) the products aren't fake the commercials aren't fake um eric bought a hundred commercials for a dollar thought it was a great deal i keep telling him that the commercials are supposed to pay us (laughs) um but he's he's convinced that was a hell of a deal um and then uh you know, we just kind of like go back into goofing for a while, and then and then we end the show usually um, because there's not yet been a show that hasn't ended. So that's usually how we go. Um, and Maybe then, that's the next project, though, the show that doesn't end. This is the show that I knew it was coming. So, <laughs> how did I know? And I apologize to the listener because that song is in your head forever. <laughs> um, so you can find us on Twitter at InPortastePod and Facebook.com slash Podcast. So if you like totally goofy shit and way too many callbacks, um, listen to us and see if you like it. Okie doke. Right on. And if you want to find Hop Nation USA on any of the social media platforms that you enjoy, like Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you can search Hop Nation USA, and we're at Hop Nation USA. And if you're on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, or Google Music Play, you can find episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast by, again, searching Hop Nation USA. If you're on iTunes, leave us a five-star review, because that's how we grow the show. And we're a five-star show. And we are a five-star show, and that's what we deserve. Damn right. 
Unlike Alaskan. <laughs> They're like four and a half at the minute. <laughs> like we said, they do some good beers. but Well, the winter just... ale's a negative one star. Yeah. <laughs> Swing and a miss. With that, though, you can also find uh, features and reviews that you can't find on the show at hopnationusa.com. And if you want to email us anything, just email hopnationusa at gmail.com. Adam, do you have anything more? No, no. I just wanted to thank Sean for coming on to the show. Uh, it was a good time. It was my pleasure, you guys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, thanks for the beers. That was a lot of fun. And uh, have me on again. Yeah, Please. we can do that. We, we'll we'll have to have you guys over to uh, East Liberty. and Right on. We'll, we'll, well, technically, we get into the pod um, on a dock on the Monongahela River, uh, cast off, and then we, we cast pod while we're there, and then we pull off onto another dock. So. Oh, okay. That, like that's that, that, that old uh, radio pirate life. Yeah, basically. Yeah. The, you ever see the movie Pirate Radio, Adam? Was we, that the one with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman? You got it. <laughs> yes, so we yes do, I have. We yeah. do it that way because there's a lawyer that likes to chase us down and sue us a lot. His name is Bill Lawyerson. Um, well, that's and, appropriate. Yeah. He's hmm. he's actually an attorney. He stresses, not a lawyer. <laughs> so, um, but he, he would always like show up. We used to record out of our, our, our producer, J Pro's basement, and we had to move out of there because we were getting hounded by this guy. Um, but all you got to do is take like a, a model train and throw it, and he goes running. So it's it's pretty much what scale? Distract. It doesn't matter. He's he's <laughs> obsessed. <64. laughs> he's obsessed with all trains. So oh, okay. So if you you threw a couple of HO scale down the, the stairwell, you'd be good for the evening. The guy would go down there, and you wouldn't see him for months. Nice. He lost his job, his wife, and everything because of a train model set we set up for him a long time ago. It was really tragic. Uh, he did that to himself. Yeah, well, we kind of <laughs> did it to him. We knew. We knew what happened. <laughs> we did that to him. We found him in a bush later. It's it's a long story. Where's my end scale? <laughs> so, I just need one end scale. Yeah, he's like, put it into my vein. So. Steve, for your information, the end scale is the tiny version. Uh-huh. So it's just a little hit. That's all he needs. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can little. inject it into his vein. <laughs> yeah. That's uh-huh. awesome. Is that some inner space shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's nowhere near the Lionel scale, but it's completely different. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have the feeling that you and Bill Lawyers would get along just fine. <laughs> just fine. <laughs> and with that, I believe we're going to go drink some tequila, not tequila. I hope everybody has a good yeah, weekend. Yeah, a little bonus content. You guys reacting to the tequila, maybe. Yeah, yeah. We Maybe we'll put that up. I think maybe that can go into a best of episode. Sure. I like yeah. that. Yeah, I like that. So with that, we'll catch you next week with episode 52. That's a big one. Our official, yeah. <laughs> quote unquote, quote unquote. <laughs> our official year in review, I guess. I don't yeah, know what it's going to be. thanks for having me on the 50th episode, guys. I really You got 51. <laughs> thanks for having me on the 50th episode. Really important to me. I appreciate that. Really nice. So stay tuned, Hop Nation. We will be back next week. <laughs> <laughs>